this is Cy Soldier here, continuing with our Let's Play Dominions 4, Nazca, Rise of the Monies. We have our new turn here, as you can see, Cy has cast the Well of Misery. That is going to improve our Death Gem income significantly. We've also got another uh, King. Apparently Ashdod has raised another Prophet. We have a battle in the woodlands, Micklin is attacking us. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Our forces have defeated the attacking force from Miklin. Uh, we actually lost a fairly considerable number of our long dead. Let's actually just take a quick look at that. They may have sent their god once again. Indeed, it looks like they have. And you can see the last time he attacked, he had five fire magic. Now he's only got four. So we've probably killed their god once again. We have plenty of long dead here. It would have been good if I had moved the long dead into the rear so that the province defense actually went first. That's one small mistake that I made. But regardless, we are going to win this battle. Apparently their god actually comes with several small jaguars that uh, accompany him into battle. Wow, their priests are doing a lot of damage with those uh, banishments. I saw them wiping out large groups of my long dead. Wow. So their priests are what's actually doing most of that damage. Good grief. Oh, it's their prophet. Hopefully I've actually managed to kill this guy this time. Is he dead? He is dead. Hmm. With any luck, I'll kill this guy in the battle. Looks like their, uh, their pretender god has still got some afflictions from the last time, it looks like. He's got a... Uh, oh, he's lost an eye. He's got a never healing wound. What is that? Disbelief. All illusions in the vicinity are dispelled. Interesting. Holy crap, did we already... Did we kill their god? He went down fast. Okay, so they're running for it. Looks like we're not going to actually manage to kill their prophet. I have to check the battle stats again and make sure that I actually killed their god. Seems like he went down fast. What are these guys? Whites. They have some whites with them. The whites are some tough little boogers. But now they're dead little boogers. Alright. Oh, you killed our god! Yes, we did indeed kill his god. So Now if they call him back, he's only going to have three fire magic. And then after I kill him again, he'll only have two, and then one, and then none. So, we did have some barbarians attack. Now that would be the province I believe I was warned about when that scout appeared. So I did put some more province defense in there, and apparently that was a good move. Let's go ahead and construct a temple here. And we should be able to build a temple here as well. And let's go ahead and build a temple here too. Go ahead and move this priest that way. I'll build a temple there the next turn. And we have all these long dead here. We're going to go ahead and... I guess we'll move them there. 
and we'll move these guys into that province and then the next turn we're gonna converge on that one right there go ahead and continue moving these guys back to the fortress having them researching go ahead and take a look at this you can see we now have 37 death gem income so that's quite good <coughs> excuse me all right now then we can actually have Psy forge something of interest here. I think I'm going to... Uh, what do we want to do here? I'm going to go ahead and forge that Sword of the Oglomer. Elk of Life is cool as well. However, mostly we're using... Uh, dead troops already so that's not really going to be of huge use to us if I had a little more in fire magic I could actually forge the arc but again that's one of those things that strikes down uh, non-sacred troops I'm not completely sure if the arc kills all troops, blinds all troops, or if it just uh, does enemy troops. You would think it does only enemy, enemy troops, but I'm not completely sure on that. So. That's what we're going to forge. The Sword of the Oglemur. have this guy call some supplies and you can see we've already got a significant amount of those guys right there probably call a wraith lord on the next turn and we're going to go ahead and consolidate what troops we have left here Send some of these guys back. I'm going to move these troops back into the back lines. That way the province defense goes first. And these three kings here, we're going to send them on back that way. Actually, this guy here, he can go ahead and construct a temple as well. And what do we have here? Okay. So one of these guys, I can send him back. And these guys are going to move forward. I'll have these guys move back. And they will move forward. So we are continuing to push our front line I do believe I can probably take that province I have quite a few of the Sapayas and a fair number of long dead looking down here we'll have them are reanimating he will reanimate as well and he will reanimate. Along with him. Uh, this guy. Actually, is there anything of interest that he can forge? He could forge the Winterbringer. Amulet of the Doppelganger. The amulet makes the wearer look like an ordinary commoner. It works equally well on a large golem and a human. Hmm. The magic lamp. How much does this guy have in fire magic? Only one. If I had a, say, a ring of wizardry, the skull of fire, 
uh, skull staff that would bring him up to where he could actually forge the magic lamp but I don't have a ring of wizardry for now he's just going to research try to snatch up all the unique artifacts that I can before the enemy is able to do that let's go ahead and take another look at the score graphs here we are still first place in provinces in fortresses we're looking pretty good we're in about second place there income we are still looking quite good gem income we are way ahead of everyone else and research we've kind of leveled out since we switched everybody over to reanimating dominion we're still in about the middle there and army size we are looking extremely good <coughs> I'm wondering I give him a oh yes let's they cannot use the skull staff. Do they have astral magic? They do, but I don't know what that's going to get for them. You know what? I might actually be able to have them forge the uh, the sword I need six in that I could actually get them up to six with the uh, starshine skull cap and the ring of sorcery Let's do that. Or you know what? Well, yeah. Again, they can't. They can't use that dark, uh, scepter of dark regency. So I'm going to take the starshine skull cap and the ring of sorcery away from him. We're going to give it to this guy. Now, he should be able to forge the sword. And I'm going to have our pretender god do something else. Let's see here. What is that? Winged angelic beings. Okay, so if I had a little more in fire magic, I could actually do the King of Bane fires. King of Banefires costs how much? 50 death gems. I'll tell you what, we're actually going to take this turn to empower him in air magic, I do believe. Do I want air magic or water magic? I don't have that much water income. I'm going to empower him in air magic. I have plenty of air gems. So 
So we're forging the sword, empowering our pretender god. Nothing extremely interesting there. A tree staff actually costs quite a bit of uh, nature magic to forge. If I had the earth boots, well, the earth boots, obviously, that's not going to help. It would improve his earth magic at least. But he might be able to forge something else of interest. Alright. I think we are good to go for this turn. Probably going to go ahead and end it here. Oh yes, these guys. We need to continue moving them down. I think I forgot about them last turn. They are moving down there. And we're moving down there with them. So, yeah, I think we are good to go for this turn. So, we will end it here. And we will go ahead and end this video here as well. So, as always, if you enjoy our videos, I hope you will like and subscribe. And we will see you again shortly. Thank you very much.